on a day like this, uh, International uh, Universal Health Coverage, the 12th of December. So while Sureka is going to pre uh, project the slide, uh, I'm going to start uh, sharing some of the key summary of the charter. Over the last uh, couple of days, we have shared the charter with so many uh, platforms. Uh, many of you, I'm sure by now, you have seen the full PDF version of the charter uh, on different uh, platforms. The aim of sharing with you ahead of time so that uh, you'll be able to read and also uh, from your question. So this charter was adopted on the 18th of October, 2019 at New Delhi, India, during the Global Copacity Symposium. And it is, has a slogan, uh, health for all, grounded in people. We believe in the power of the people as we are launching our accountability for health charter and uh, call to action. Next slide, please. So uh, as we all know, we live in a world of health inequalities, even though overall life expectancies have improved over the years. And also there are persistent differences in health <laughs> outcomes between population groups and within and among countries. The you are also aware of the International Bill of Human Rights, uh, 1948, the Health for All Declaration endorsing the right to the highest standard of health for all, which was adopted at Alma Atta in 1978. And also you are aware that in Astana, uh, 20 uh, years after, then we also review uh, no one behind and call for urgent attention to addressing these inequalities. Next slide, please. Uh, with this charter, we set forth our broad vision of how citizenship, governance, and accountability processes must contribute towards better health and the well-being of all, including marginalized. So as uh, Surika mentioned in her own opening remark, uh, we, are, we, we are so excited that over 500 practitioners, activists, professionals, uh, you know, were in uh, New Delhi, uh, in October, where the charter was officially introduced and also adopted, and the symposium provided an opportunity for sharing experiences and concerns and devising fresh strategies for strengthening the engagement of marginalized communities. This charter shares our common concerns, affirmations, commitment, and also our call to action. Next slide. We believe that all human beings have equal rights including the right to the highest attainable standard of health, that accountability, transparency, inclusion, participation, and democracy, along with adequately resourced public services are essential for health, sustainable development, and social justice. Next slide. Next slide. However, even though we have mentioned those beliefs uh, above, we are concerned that social hierarchies and oppressive structures continue to prevent married communities and populations from fully enjoying the range of civil, political, economic, and social rights. Powerful forces are eroding democratic structures and constraining many populations. The space for communities and civil society to engage in governance processes is shrinking in various contexts. Multilateral processes to uphold human rights and accountability mechanisms have been rendered also meaningless. Next slide, please. Shallow practices of transparency and accountability concern meaningful participation of marginalized communities, dominant practices of evidence-based policy, making trivialize the life experiences of ordinary people. Private actors are given opportunities to intervene in healthcare without adequate regulation and oversight. 
we affirm our commitment to accountability being a core obligation of people in authority within a responsive public system who must take responsibility for their actions. Social accountability that provides marginalized communities access to governance processes, inclusive, meaningful participation of the marginalized and also mobilization and solidarity within marginalized communities. Social accountability may, uh, measures that effectively engage marginalized people and communities, protecting the activists who may face threats of repression, stigmatization, and even violence, subjecting private services and public private partnerships in the health sector to systematic and effective transparency and accountability processes. Also, building alliances with frontline healthcare workers who are often blamed for service deficits that arise from health system weaknesses, community health workers, nurses, paramedics, and doctors in community level facilities often deal with poor working conditions in ordinate workloads. Promoting improvements in the planning and delivery of services through changes at level of implementation as well as policy. Adopting social accountability practices to complex and evolving realities, especially at the community level, and also adopting accountability for the social determinants of health while moving towards health for all. Thank you very much, Sureka. It's a pleasure to be with you all. And again, welcome to this webinar today on UHC Day. Um, as we begin to look at the call to action that accompanies the COPASA Charter, I also just want to remind our participants, you can use the chat box to record your questions and answers so that your questions and answers or questions are the first ones to be dealt with in the discussion that follows. We have a call to action and you can see on your screen right now, um, <clears throat> there are four main principles here. And the first two deal with who are we? And it's really among civil society, we must emphasize solidarity. You can see that in the first bullet, among the social organizations, movements, coalitions, and community-based organizations as they form networks. And secondly, we must engage our communities. Those two are core to the principles of social accountability and to COPASA, as we as practitioners engage in social accountability. The next two points, looking at gender and social equity, as well as transparency and other principles, this is how we work. We want to make sure that we are bringing forward the people who are the most marginalized or have the least opportunity to have their voices heard. And then secondly also, is to make sure that we are working and modeling the kind of practices and behaviors we want, such as transparency, inclusion, participation, and accountability for all. And that, those are the core, the core drivers for all of the, the, the ways in which we want to work together in our call to action. If we go to the next slide here, we'll start looking at 10 different specific constituencies that we want to focus on. And putting community-based organizations and social movements first, we call on the leaders of these organizations and movements to strengthen and promote the leadership of women and marginalized people, putting in practice that idea of gender inequity. And then building the solidarity among social organizations is very key for civil society. Too often in civil society, we look for purity of action and then criticize each other rather than focus on the larger, the larger distractions from health for all or accountability in health, which are outside of civil society. Next slide. Second, we want to look at the frontline workers in health and the social sectors. And we want to call on all frontline workers, whether in the health facilities or health administration or other social sectors, to share information with the people whom they work with, whether that's patients, students, et cetera. And we want to make sure that that information is very clear and understandable to their constituents, not just that it's shared as a, as a checkbox in some ways. That information sharing is critical to forming partnerships with our communities. And that's something we find is essential in our charter and our call to action. Next, looking at broader civil society, NGOs and other civil society organizations, we call on all these groups to strengthen their mobilization of communities and social accountability within the work that they do, the frameworks of their projects and programs, 
because it's essential that we practice in civil society the principles that we advocate. Uh, too often, we are too bound to outside restrictions, whether from donors or others. We need to put in place social accountability for our own programs first. Next. Now for researchers and research organizations, similar to other aspects of civil society, we need to emphasize the need for sharing information for accounting for the work that's taking place. Research is too often framed as an extractive process where the engagement with communities is simply to get informed to consent. But we want to move beyond that. We want to say how does research really serve not just the broader, broader international community, or people in general, but how is it serving the people who have actively participated in the research process? And that needs direct engagement and true engagement with communities, as well as feedback information of information that researchers are able to generate from the data they collect. Next. The private sector is a very difficult one because we know that they are driven and motivated by not just, in some cases, a sense of service, but also the profit motive. And how can we find a proper place for civil for pro, private sector actors in social accountability? That has to be done. What we're advocating here is that the private sector recognizes that they have a respectful role in, this, in healthcare delivery, but they also must accept that they have to be accountable to the people they serve and in a structured mechanism. And Developing that mechanism is something that we need to put in place along with the private sector and regulatory frameworks. Next. Next slide. Sureka, waiting for the next slide right now. I'm wondering, have people lost the slides right now? We're hoping that we can be able to resume this very shortly. What I will do at this point is I will continue just orally and we'll have the slides come back on. Uh, the next major constituency group that we're looking at is the media. And just as civil society groups are to be held accountable for, for social accountability, we also want the media to help play their role in taking an independent look and a critical look at health programs and processes to make sure that we are able to put in place and get the information that allows for social accountability. That involves investigative reporting, um, looking at malpractices in the health sector, as well as celebrating and promoting champions for social accountability to show the way forward on that avenue. Um, we cannot leave our governments, and that includes parliamentarians. And so we call on governments and parliamentarians to put in place social accountability as part of public service delivery. There are certain criteria that we expect for that, and you will see that when the slides come on, and you will see it also in the charter and in the call to action. Moving ahead, we want to look at international agencies, including multilateral and regional bodies, the ones that we typically call the donors. And we will call on donors to fund and expect social accountability in the programs that they put in place, specifically around health, but also for other social, social benefit programs. That's not just monitoring and evaluation, that's also putting in place mechanisms where local voices can be expressed and can be heard by the people in power. Moving further, we're looking at the United Nations and other regional and inter intergovernmental bodies. We want to ensure that the emergence and strengthening of, of these kind of sectors around social accountability is formalized. And we propose an international mechanism for social accountability as a watchdog. That would, that would be a proper role for these in terms of social accountability for health. And then finally, we're also looking at the national and international human rights bodies. We want these bodies to not simply look at the national or subnational levels, but to actively look in terms of gender and equity and find the most marginalized groups so that their voices regarding accountability of health programs and systems can be heard and then. <laughs> 
So with that, I conclude the summary of the call to action. I think at this stage, we can transition to a discussion. Now, I apologize, we've not been able to show the remaining portion of the, the slides on the screen that summarize the call to action. I'm very hopeful that many of you have had a chance to look at the, the call to action and the, the Copasa Charger. We'll be putting the link onto the chat box very shortly. Um, can we see if there are any questions that are coming up right now on the chat box? Yes, uh, thanks, Rabbi. Uh, people can also speak if they want uh, directly to the webinar, or they can post the question on the on the chat. We are free to ask questions, to comment on the chatter, on the next step, on the way forward. And we can equally write on the, on the chat screen, yeah. Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Hello. Yeah, my name is uh, Salih Sumusa Muhammad. I'm calling from Africa Health Budget Network, Nigeria. Uh, I would like to speak about the recommendations of the charter. I was actually excited for the uh, almost all the recommendations, but I would like to ask a question particularly on the uh, social uh, accountability watchdog. Uh, please, uh, which steps uh, Kwafasha is planning to take to advocate to the UN for the establishment of the international mechanism? for the social accountability, which is according to the recommendation will serve as the watchdog. So please, which are the steps uh, Kopasa are planning to take and uh, uh, where the civil society will sit in these steps? Which, uh, uh, what uh, uh, role can the civil society play in this advocacy? Thank you. So Rabi, any thoughts? Uh, from Nigeria is asking, we recommended establishing the International Social Accountability Watchdog by the United Nations. The current steps that we are going to follow to advocate for that. It's a very good question. Right now, we are putting this as a concept to be proposed. So we need to interrogate that concept ourselves among civil society and decide what is the proper mechanism. We've determined that it properly rests in terms of hosting through an international agency or perhaps with the UN, but we also recognize that that high profile level can be compromised by a lack of independence and the UN mechanisms that rely on member state obligations. So therefore, we have to see what is the best way for that kind of international watchdog to balance a, a scope that looks at the global level as well as its independence. So I would say first is that we need to draft up an outline of what would be this kind of international watchdog. And second, then we see how do we want to ad advocate for that and position that advocacy according to the interests of the different groups that we outlined in the call to action. Um, that's an initial step. And I'm glad that people have asked about it because we need to interrogate ourselves further. Right now, it's, it's the germ of an idea. Thank you. Yeah, this is very helpful. Uh, somebody is also asking here, uh, Rabi, that uh, is it possible to also, we introduce an international day on social accountability where it can be used to rally around some of these uh, concepts. I like that suggestion very much. Um, it's not something that we have in the call to action, but it's certainly something that could fit into a larger program. Um, what I would suggest here is that let's not make this simply a question and answer. Let's see if we can have a discussion among all of us here on the webinar to see what would be the best approach. So our first two questions have focused on the International Social Accountability Watchdog and the idea for that. Second, on an international day for social accountability, specific perhaps to health. I also see a question in our chat box, and that's from Kate Hawkins. 
Um, she, she says that she appreciates the charter. And she, her question is, how would she like us to promote that and use it? So I'm putting that out to the group. It's not for Aminu or Sureka or I to just answer that question. Let's have a discussion among all of us in a democratic manner and see how would we want to move forward. Very good. Please, uh, everybody is welcome to make contribution on how to move forward with the charter. Uh, definitely in Kopasa, we are going to have a lot of internal discussion after the holiday, but please feel free to suggest what we could do in Kopasa in collaboration with all of you, how to uh, move forward with the charter and the call to action. And just to promote the discussion, you have in your Zoom window, you should have the option to raise a hand when you want to be recognized, or you can simply unmute your microphone so that you can speak. Let's be respectful and allow many speakers to come in with their own ideas. Let me throw a question while people are thinking about the, the watchdog, which is, uh, I think something very good. Ravi has mentioned that we can uh, weigh the pros and cons of either engaging the United Nations on this or uh, to set up an independent uh, watchdog. But we should also think about the how. If we are not engaging the UN on this, then uh, which agency or where do we start uh, discussing to have an independent watchdog? You should remember within the UN system, uh, there is the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights. So even though uh, it is also a member state uh, union, but I think it has more uh, flexibility and also is more into the, uh, engaging the states on human rights issues and abuses. So this is uh, one way we can look at it, or we can also propose to uh, some partners, international NGOs, original NGOs, to agree to develop the uh, watchdog as an independent uh, group. But I would like to hear your thoughts about either engaging the UN High Commissioner on Human Rights to open a discussion, or we begin to assemble uh, experts to look at, is it possible to establish an independent watchdog that will also be looking at the uh, government, United Nations, and all the other uh, agencies and partners across the globe. So please bring your ideas because we'll be, we are jotting some of these things as we move into New Year. We are going to start developing the concept notes for some of these uh, recommendations and how we can take them forward. Thank you. So, Simon, are you still there? The person that asked the question. Yeah, I'm still there. Okay. So, like I said, we're looking at two angles now. Uh, either to open discussion with United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, which is closer to social accountability, and also it is more flexible. Uh, to engage compared to other UN bodies or to propose uh, an independent watchdog. But the question, if we are pursuing that angle, is how do we do that? Uh, which agency is going to host an independent watchdog and still becoming uh, very useful and also uh, strategic in holding the, the government and the UN to account? So these are just uh, ideas that people can uh, contribute uh, so that we can begin to develop some of these uh, concept notes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. This is Ravi again. I'd just like to pick up an earlier question, the one from Kate. Um, what are the expected ways that those of us on this webinar plan to use the charter and the call to action? Let's just share ideas among each other. 
And I'll but hand this over to the group still? right now. Kate, is she online? I believe she is. I've seen her question in the chat box. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's good to know which uh, NGO is she based so that uh, we can equally begin to propose some of the steps. Is she working with an NGO or with the Human Rights Group? Sure, so I'm, I wasn't at Capasa, but I'm very interested in your work and in the charter. And I work for the Arise Consortium. So it's research organization. Um, and different universities in Sierra Leone, Kenya, Bangladesh, and India. Um, so for me, what I'd really like to do is share on social media, share among my network, and write a blog about the charter, sort of promoting it and asking researchers to think particularly about the recommendations to them. That's what I can do in the immediate term. But longer term, as somebody new, what would you like me to do? So uh, it's good that you are in a research consortium, and uh, one of the issue, one of the things we hope to introduce maybe next year as a proposal to hear from everybody is: Can we introduce an international day uh, on social accountability where globally practitioners will use that day to do a lot of activism? Uh, how practical is that? Is it doable? Is this something that we should pursue as COPASA? That's one uh, recommendation. Second one is promoting and advocating for the watchdog. So it's good to hear also from uh, a researcher like you, uh, what are some of the steps you, you, you should think we can take to engage uh, meaningfully uh, the relevant stakeholders that could begin to uh, bring up the, the understanding and the thinking around uh, this international watchdog on social accountability. Thank you very much. And I can think more about international academic spaces and conferences on health, how we can bring the social accountability theme more prominently into those as well and get researchers to reflect a bit more on their practice. Hi, Aminu. My name yes. is Percy. Uh, my name is Percy. I'm calling from Safed in Harare, Zimbabwe. Thank you so much. Um, Go ahead, please. Yes, uh, definitely it was an honor to be part of the COPASA. Uh, from my end, um, I'm not well versed in terms of the UN systems, but my issue is around localization, linking the global to the local. So, for example, we are doing programming in Southern Africa. Uh, that's covered through the SADAC. Uh, 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 economic community. So for me, it's around building or mobilizing broader coalitions of civil society that can engage. Uh, for example, via there's the SADAC, SADAC, um, SADAC Secretariat and SADAC member states. Then number two, there's also the SADAC Parliamentary Forum that also brings together parliaments from across the 16 countries. So it's now having like a collective that engages via these bodies so that we, we raise greater awareness and attention among member states on the need to uh, integrate um, elements of social accountability uh, and, in, and promote better citizen engagement. That, that's my take. So while we're talking about the UN level, also to reflect on how we can link it to regional uh, opportunities and spaces. That's my contribution. Thank you. Thank you very much, Percy. And please do keep in touch. Uh, let us have your email so that uh, by the time we begin to explore some of this uh, option and next step, uh, we'll keep you in the loop and also for you to fully participate. So please, uh, we're all free to drop our emails either by at the Google group or you can also put it on the on the chat. You can use it to uh, engage. Moi, je vais dire à Madame Draga d'aller voir Bassavé. So, Kate, also, thank you so much for offering to write the blog. Please do share with us the social links whenever it is available. So, we can also promote it at the Copasta Google Group and also 
will also promote it on our social media uh, handles. This is very good, and we commend you for that uh, partnership. Many thanks for your presentations and all the work that went into this. So uh, I want to hear people's comment about this International Day. Do we take that? Uh, this is something uh, that is already exciting, but uh, is this something that people believe that the world could embrace when you have International Day on social accountability? Aminu, can I pitch in Alex's hand up? Oh, you're back. Alex, okay. pl you Alex so please do come in. Alex, please do come in Hi, with your comments. You. Yeah. Thank you, Mina. Thank you, Sarika. Um, this is Alex from IDS in the UK, and uh, I was at Kupasa and wanted to congratulate everyone on the work that's gone into the charter. It's very inspiring. Um, also, to say that we're putting out a series of new stories in the next few days, and we'll certainly link to the page about the charter. Um, but I had a question about the Social Accountability Day, which is that um, even though the movement for social accountability in health is particularly strong, we know that there are similar uh, efforts to strengthen social accountability in other sectors. So what do people think about reaching out uh, to people working on water and sanitation or education or in other areas uh, to build alliances around social accountability versus focusing on the health sector and trying to get social accountability more strongly on the agendas of WHO and other actors. I think there's a strategic choice to think about there. Thank you so much, uh, Alex, for your suggestions. Definitely, uh, we are hoping that in January, we'll start doing uh, targeted advocacy based on this year recommendation and also many others to talk to uh, different communities, including uh, People Health Movement, uh, IDRS, and all the associates partners that also uh, implemented the uh, COPASA Global Symposium together with us. We will we'll engage in advocacy to, to reach out and get suggestions. We will also engage the UN system and also some of the global NGO networks uh, in the health sector who are also discussing accountability like the Gavi, the Global Fund NGOs, the Global Financing Facility, uh, Global Action Plan, FE 2020, uh, the SON movement, which is nutrition. So we'll do a lot of targeted advocacy to share the charter with them and also see how we can have a rallying point to promote the social accountability. So this is uh, a good suggestion you are making. Thank you. So do you have some comments at the country level, what we could promote with the charter, the public-private partnership, which is also a recommendation you know, for the private sector. We have discussed the frontline health workers, how they can also be involved uh, regarding the issue of the patient's right, patient-centered services, engaging with the countries uh, and also uh, regional intergovernmental bodies. How do we engage them? Uh, these are some of the we, uh, areas that NGOs are not doing much. Uh, we, we have been succeeding in engaging in United Nations system. But when, when it comes to the regional intergovernmental bodies, sometimes it's a bit uh, challenging. So could we have some suggestion? How do we engage with the European Union, with the African Union, with the Latin America, the Asian uh, regional groups? What are some of the modalities for us to uh, engage these intergovernmental bodies. Could you have some ideas from you? Or if you have any link already with some of this group, please kindly let us know so we can work with you to share the charter with some of these uh, leaders of the regional intergovernmental bodies. Thank you. Uh, hello, I mean, it's Percy again. Go ahead. Okay, so I'll give an example. Uh, we have a partnership that is funded through SDC. Uh, it's called the Partnership for Social Accountability. So it's in part, in, we're implementing with uh, Action Aid. So part of uh, collaboration, regional approaches that we've been doing is um, targeting um, the SADC Parliamentary Forum, which brings together 
represented from the different parliaments within Southern Africa. So one of the okay. plans, I think, for the coming year is to try and uh, have sessions with them and to orient them around the concepts of social accountability, how they can better participate in their, their oversight role uh, in terms of public resources management. So some of what is in the charter is already something that we're already taking forward. But we are also welcome to also expand the learning uh, to other networks, for example, in Africa, um, and see where other opportunities for further collaboration can okay. I think this is strategic because we have so many already members within the COPASA with different interventions and have quite good practices that they can also share. And I think that's, that's where we can really start from uh, when you're looking at the local to the regional level. Thank you so much. I'll take a note of this thing as part of the next step. We'll definitely uh, uh, come back to you to discuss how to engage the SADIC uh, parliamentarians uh, in 2020. Uh, let me hear if there's any uh, window to engage the UK Parliament, the European Union, uh, the African Union. Uh, uh, if there are any, someone already in this uh, call already has an entry point it becomes easy for us to share the charter uh, through uh, the partnership we're already cultivating now uh, with all of you. Yeah. We have ECOWAS also in Africa. We have uh, EXA community. There are so many intergovernmental bodies that we could begin to map out to do a targeted advocacy with them. Hello? Yeah, go ahead, please. Okay, uh, thank you, Aminu, uh, for this uh, uh, call on the uh, prior PPP. Actually, it's an uh, area of interest to us, even though that we don't have uh, any link to this intergovernmental organization you are mentioned. You have mentioned, but uh, it will be of interest to us if uh, there is any link uh, that we can also join because uh, here in Nigeria, we have some uh, advocacy we have done some two years ago, which actually uh, 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 yielded a good result because uh, in a state uh, which is, uh, Kano State actually is a northern uh, state in Nigeria. Actually, we advocated and we got a law that established a uh, private partnership uh, framework in the state. And currently, there is a, a pilot uh, that is uh, ongoing in the state between the government and the private uh, company that is, is uh, running uh, two facilities providing healthcare services to the uh, community, which we see also it as a very uh, good uh, approach to uh, minimize uh, uh, the inequalities in, in the state in terms of uh, self -serve, uh, health service uh, provision in the state. So uh, we identify gaps in this uh, area of VPP, which requires a capacity building and some support. So we are very much interested if there is any link to work with this intergovernmental organization to strengthen this uh, PPP, uh, particularly in Kano State, uh, which has already started uh, this in, uh, in the state for almost two years. So we hope that uh, if there is any link, uh, the professor uh, secretariat will let us know where and how we can uh, work with this intergovernmental organization to send in this uh, uh, framework in the state. Thank you. Thank you, Salusu, for this uh, experience sharing of Nigeria, the public-private partnership and also how to engage. So we we'll surely come up uh, with some key recommendation on how to move the call to action forward uh, in 2020 from January and, and also identifying uh, which uh, mechanism and also which structure can we target to begin to uh, push out these recommendations uh, forward. Somebody mentioned about the you know, international conference and academia. So one of the uh, conference next year is this, uh, the health system uh, research symposium. 
which is going to take place in November, uh, I think in Asia in 2020. So Kate will definitely reach out to them. I certainly will, absolutely. <laughs> you see if we chatter and also some of the concept we have in mind. Um, just to say that the, uh, this is Alex again, just to say that the, um, the communications coordinator for that conference, the Health Systems Research 2020, which is happening in Dubai in November, uh, Tom Barker, he's been tweeting links to the, uh, to the charter. So I think it's very much on their radar. Wow. Thank you, Alex. If you can help us with his email or her email, uh, we can definitely get in touch to start exploring yeah. If, if we could have a, a session, uh, either a concurrent session or a plenary uh, talk about the charter, please uh, let us uh, have the mail. Now we can begin to have that uh, discussion. Thank you. Sure. Uh, no problem. I'll pass it on. Okay. Very good. Thank you so Hi. much. It's Kate here. Another idea is I'm a member of the ethics working group in Health Systems Global. And I think a lot of the recommendations to researchers are also ethical points, so I can circulate it to them also. Thank you, Kate. I'm taking notes of all this uh, wonderful and exciting uh, recommendation and next step. And uh, I'm sure uh, with all working together, the charter belongs to everybody, not uh, for person that introduced the charter, is for everybody to make use to strengthen social accountability for health uh, all over the world. Thank you so much for that. So um, I believe we'll try to explore if we could have a session in at uh, the 2020 Health System Global uh, uh, Symposium, uh, focusing on the charter, the research questions we could bring out, and also some of the uh, key uh, allies that we could mobilize to promote social accountability for health. So I wanted to ask a quick one. Well, we just have uh, like three minutes now to, to wrap up. The International Day, some of somebody already proposed, which has also attracted attention. Uh, we are discussing social accountability for health, not uh, you know, everything, uh, which sometimes may become difficult. Do we propose International uh, Day on social accountability for health? or do we just begin to open the discussion on just uh, social accountability collectively? So it's good to have an idea from you while we are just having some few minutes to wrap up. As we move forward to January, what could be the likely uh, uh, direction we should take as advice from you? Thank you. I am, you know, it's it's Percy here. Go ahead. Um, I, I, would, I would recommend that uh, because there's so much diversity, but at the same time, if you look, for example, the SDGs, there's interlinkage. Example, you know, when you talk about food security, or really the elements that affect health, when you're talking about financing, the issues that affect health. And for me, it's of the bigger concept around strengthening citizen participation within governance systems. So I would recommend that the day focuses on broader, uh, so just broader social accountability uh, than the limitation just to health. That's my recommendation. Thank you so much for this uh, broader perspective. It's definitely noted and will also be put forward to a discussion. Thank you. So Sureka, are you online? Yes, a minimum here. Okay, if you want to wrap, or we just have like one minute uh, to the one hour we committed. If you have any final uh, thoughts to wrap up, then please uh, you can proceed. But I would like to take this opportunity to thank everybody for this wonderful and exciting moment. We had so much ideas and a lot of suggestions that we can carry forward. We'll definitely come back to you with some of the next step and also get more perspective from all of you. Thank you.